Welcome to Life Block, a beauty podcast for sassy and seasoned women who have lived life and have a drawer full of lip gloss to prove it. Welcome to season three of Life Gloss. Hi, Hill. Hey, Susan. Bye. Special request, demand, actually. Everyone wanted us to turn our cameras on. So here we are. Here we are in all our glory. In our glory. And it's going to be fun because what we're going to do is we're just going to shoot straight through, you guys. We are not going to get fancy with all the editing. So who knows what we're going to be doing sometimes because we're often in our bathroom rolling our hair, fixing nails, doing things in life while we're recording our podcast. So you guys are going to get the real behind the scenes. <laughs> and this is what it's really like. You're like in the matrix right now. You're crooked now. <laughs> yeah. You're like, can you flip over? There you go. See, now does everybody know why we've kept the cameras off? Right. Because we don't know what we're doing. It's not That's easy. Hey, right. yeah. You know and what we're talking about? Else, my computer is like freezing. My phone can record. My computer cannot. So anyway, welcome to life. Season well, we're going to let you. Whoop. Take 100. So, yeah, we'll get better at this. And you want to know it's funny, Susan? I have you in not one, but two windows. I have you like this. Wow, you're lucky. Double the Susan, double the fun for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. so I can't believe we're in season three. And for our listeners that don't know, I am on the East Coast and Hillary's on the West Coast. So it's about 1.30 my time. So I have the afternoon sun and you have the, what, 10.30 a.m. sun? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at today. And we thought we would just pop on officially and unedited and just kind of talk about what's going on as we enter season three. What do we have to look forward to this season? What are we up to? What are some thoughts? What are we thinking about these days as we transition? I know here in the Gerdeman household, it's back to school, which also means, you know, maybe a little bit more time for, for me again. So that's kind of exciting. More time to get my hair done. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is good. I love fall. I'm one of those people, and I, I don't know how many of you out there are like this, but fall for me especially September. And I don't know if it's being an East Coast kid growing up, but it was always like the time of year that was so exciting and the season changes and it's back to school. And it was almost like September is sort of the beginning of the new year for people on the East, I feel like. And I don't know, you know, I mean, listen, I spent 13 years living on the West Coast, so I can speak to that too. But I just always felt that there was a big transition and I always felt like I wanted to grab a sweater or switch, you know, yeah. your makeup look or switch from a lotion to a cream or speaking yeah. in beauty terms, you know? I mean, what do you think? Is it like that for you guys out in LA now or? You know, I am definitely a Southern California kid. I mean, I grew up in Newport Beach. We did move, you know, we lived in the South for a little bit here and there. But I spent a school year in New Hampshire. So I know what you're talking about. And it smelled like apples in the air and it was cold and you had to change your summer wardrobe to your to your winter wardrobe, which in L.A., back to school meant new clothes. But it's just because it was a new school year. You were still wearing the same stuff. As I got older and started doing Fashion Week in New York. Hello, September. Then I started really getting the seasons, which I know you were just in New York. So we were talking about that and we thought, why are we talking about this? Let's turn the cameras on. Yeah. So I was in New York this weekend. I live right outside New York City and well, not right outside, a little, little bit of a train, train in a car ride away, but, you know, lived there for, for a long time. So I go back and forth to get my hair done. And like, I'm sure, you know, many people do. It's funny because we took the whole family in this weekend for back to school haircuts yeah. and whatnot. And it's just so funny because I'm looking around and it's fashion week in New York, as some people may realize or some people really don't care. And Hillary and I both worked fashion week 
many, many moons ago and many, many shows. And I mean, I worked it predominantly when it was under the tents, 7th Avenue on 6th, 7th on 6th in Bryant Park. And it's so funny. You know, we were down at our salon, which is in Nolita, which is downtown. And, you know, I'm looking around for signs of Fashion Week, like desperately looking for banners and people and models. I got to tell you, it just didn't feel like Fashion Week. And I think it's because there isn't a central location anymore. It moved up to Lincoln Center when Mercedes Benz was sponsoring it. Now it's kind of like everybody's scattered all over the five boroughs and there just didn't, there wasn't an energy. There was a line around the block for L.L. Bean, which I was kind of like, oh, I should have brought all my boat and totes. I could have like sold them for a million bucks. But, you know, they were doing some embroidery thing. I did go to the Hourglass Barney's pop up, which was cute. But honestly, I don't know, maybe, and I'm sure some of our listeners feel this way, but maybe the older you get. You know, I don't want to say the more jaded you get, because I still love the excitement of new beauty and fashion week and all Mm -hmm. that. Love it. It's in my blood. But at the same time, I kind of feel like, you know, I don't know. Is it over? Am I just over? You know what? I can't believe it took me this long for it to occur to me. For so long when I was doing fashion week, I was doing it as a beauty editor and an artist. So it's like, I was doing the makeup for the shows, interviewing the key makeup artists and the designer, if I could get to the designer, writing the stories, getting it into Sephora.com. I have a sneaking suspicion because for our listeners, there was nothing like the energy of Fashion Week. Everyone was scurrying about. You were high-fiving. You were seeing people. You were trading things from backstage. You were in the hotel lobbies together. You were running through the tents. Even when it was at Lincoln, there were still like four or five enclaves unless people were doing it in their ateliers. You were still seeing people all the time, all week, multiple times a day. I'd always see my hair people if we were doing some of the same shows. But there was an electricity, cafe, streets, hotels. It was on fire. You didn't sleep for a week. And it didn't matter. It just didn't yeah. matter. Maybe it's just where you I know, was. No, you know, I, I mean, I, that's a, a lot of how it was. I mean, also, yeah. I think most people are consuming Fashion Week on social media. So it doesn't oh, matter. Well, I, I mean, think it's social media. Well, but I just thought there'd just be more kids roaming around. Like I thought, you know, like I said, we were in Nolita. We were in Soho. We were downtown. But I just didn't see I didn't see any models walk around. I didn't see any kids and great fashion and my daughter you know she's 17 and she was looking for you know to see if anybody was wearing really outrageous clothes and no it was just very quiet it was very you would not have known it was just another weekend a beautiful weekend but it was just another weekend in the city so I don't know maybe we're just getting older or to your point I think it has changed I really think it's all changed and people are scattered they're doing like invite only in their ateliers which they used to do before but there was an awareness that like editors needed to get to all the different shows people would coordinate shows if they were in different areas they would time it so you could get to one and then get to the other important shows and now it seems more of like if you're going to make it to my show then plan the day there was just it was magic it was really pure magic and i mean i was there on 11 when the towers came down. That's right. Yeah. You know, and no, even it was, and it, it was shut everything down. Of course, obviously, it was the hugest tragedy. And most of us ended up in the park because yeah. all of our shows were canceled and we were stranded there. Yeah. I can't tell you, Vincent Longo, all, all the people yeah. that I ran into, we were just all in the park. What else do you do? I just think it's really changed. And I think we've changed. And I think the times have changed. And I think that's interesting for people in the industry. You know, we'd love to hear from you how it's all changed for you. But then, you know, for our listeners that just have a passion and a love for beauty, I just think that everybody's just sort of doing their own thing now, you know, and maybe that time has passed and it's something we'll just always reminisce about. You know, you always say, oh, the good old days or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe that really was such a turning point, too. You know, I feel like it was. Things just didn't seem nothing's more important than human life, obviously. Yeah. So it was such a turning point for so many. And then we had another, obviously, big tragedy and turning point with COVID. So maybe, you know, things just 
really will never go back to how they once were, you know, and I think that's that's OK. You know, we move forward, we march on and at least we got to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I've said I still think I have all my backstage tags somewhere in a ball. I do. Yeah. For all my yeah. shows. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. So cute. And you could always tell when there was a new artist because they'd be like, well, how do I get paid? And we'd all be like, yeah, you don't. Yeah. You know. <laughs> good luck finding money. But it was fun. It was such a good time and such a creative time, you know. And I think that's the other thing that's happened with social media in the beauty industry, especially, is everything is so clean and glossy and perfect. And with that, comes in ease. It's so easy to like something and press a button and it's delivered to your house within 24 hours. But the search is gone. You know, the oh, creativity, yeah. the weirdness, oh. like all of that is gone forever, you know. So we have to create our own and make our own. Yeah. You know, remember when we used to have to like tromp through, sometimes even the meatpacking district, we'd have to tromp through these big broad streets and then these little tiny alleyways and then You'd sometimes have to go up that whole hand crank elevator to get to that one little spot. I remember the first couple of times that I went, the makeup artist had me like the key makeup artist. She was like, you can't look at the building that we're in. Like she all but blindfolded me. She like yes. basically was like, you can't look at the building number. Don't look at where we're getting out. Couldn't look at the floor the first time we went up there so that I wouldn't know where we were going. Obviously, later I knew, but it, there used to be a hunt. You know, getting your supplies and getting in and out of a taxi with the, the big trunks and cases. And, mm -hmm. you know, it definitely is a young person's game. Like, I oh, could yeah. not be traipsing around with mm -hmm. my, you know, makeup luggage. And, you know, it's like it's definitely a young person's game. I, yeah. I, there's no way I could be schlepping around like I used to anymore. No. But <laughs> in the slush in February. Yeah, that was so much fun. Um. <laughs> But now I'm kind of thinking with this whole, you know, into fall, what are we doing with makeup? Like, are we, you know, we st I'm still like bronzing. I'm still like keeping my, you know, little bit of bronzer, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I did do some makeup shopping over the weekend. Ooh, I bought a little bit, you know, some some new things from Gucci Westman because, you know, oh. I really love her products. What else did I get into? There's a new brand for teens if there's any moms out there listening gen z which my daughter picked up some stuff from there which is really cute very cool it's called gen z gen z or gen c sorry am i saying you're wrong gen c <laughs> gen c for gen z yeah gen c g-e-n-s-e-e -E. so that huh. the girls told me at i think we were in credo that that was the hot new line everyone was loving it so a little brow gel because she doesn't really wear much makeup so right she did that and I picked up my stuff. There doesn't seem to be those big launches right now. We're not seeing like what we used to have the big fall launches in August, you know, with all the mm -hmm. color out there. It's not as, as much. It's more little niche products, little, little like, or maybe they'll extend the color line. You know, I went and checked out the Goop store. I know they just launched a bunch of new lip glosses. They're really nice. Check those out. Um, Hourglass for Barney's. They did a really nice new palette. If you're in the mm. mood for a palette, the palette was really nice. It's very small, but it was a nice palette. Bronzers, highlighters, blush, whatnot. But yeah, it, it you know, in every corner, there's a makeup boutique. You've got Detox Market and Credo, and, you know, you've got all your little pop-ups and all your shops. But I don't know. Maybe because I didn't go in, I wasn't in Midtown. I didn't hit any of the department stores, but definitely... From what I'm seeing for fall, it just seems to be a couple of shade extensions or hmm. concealers. I mean, just concealers, concealers, yeah. concealers, concealers. I think we talked about this on a text, but yeah, everyone and his mother has a new concealer out, you know? Yeah. And that seems to be sort of, I know it was blush, 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 blush. Now everyone's doing concealer, 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 concealer. So it's almost like we're not seeing those color stories. We're seeing hot product like you know this is the product of the season then everybody does one you know and again that's probably social media because do you remember like we should we need to go pick up a september issue of vogue and see if it's this 
thick again. Not. But it used to be, I know, it used Not. to be that we would get stories. Remember, like, when, I, when we were beauty directors, brands would come and tell us the story of the collection. Yeah. You know, Janine LaBelle would come and say, spring is about a tea party. And these are the right. different shades in the tea right. party. And everything was a story. But it could be that because everything's gone on social media, people don't have the patience to hear about the story and buy numerous things from a collection. So they're just, I don't know. I think we can train people to pay attention to a story and buy a story again. Listening to you say that, it's making me think, oh my God, you're right. It was, it was, there was a story. There was a whole creative thought process behind whatever products were new and exciting. Now it's just shade extension or products. Like everyone's doing concealers, so now it's concealers. But there's no story yeah. behind that. There's yeah. no, there's no romance really <clears throat> in our industry. And I think to your point, it's because everything is nichey, everything is quick, everything's a button. So I think this is why so many people. I want to be romance. Well, I want to be romance too, honey. But that's a whole other podcast. But you know, I think that people just are. I don't know if it's in order of the time for it, or I just think we've been so conditioned. Fill a need, fill a need, quick and easy, quick and easy. We've become like a really cheap, whorish country. Well, we have, exactly. There's no imagination. (laughs) Yeah. And I would challenge, I would challenge a beauty brand. And this is going to be tough, but I would challenge a beauty brand to try to sell a story. A three-piece, a five-piece. Even when Merit was doing like those bags, it was all about like, Get the bag, problem solvers. People need to know why it fits. But maybe stories just, maybe stories don't work anymore. Maybe people don't want to hear a story. But I have a strong feeling. Everybody loves a story. Stories have lived for millennia. Like hashtag story time is still a big deal. So I feel like people do want to get swept up in the romance of a story. I think it's hard for brands to say, oh, we have to sell the whole collection. You don't have to. You just change your shop page and you sell from the story page. I'm giving away all the secrets right. that I use for clients that I've been trying to get to do this for a long time. And they keep telling me, I don't know that people are going to shop a story. Granted, I've been doing a lot more skincare the past few years than color, but I'm going back into color because I love it. So I don't know. I think we need romance and I think I think. I'm not going to disagree with you. I think romance would do us all a whole hell of a lot of good right Mm -hmm. now, especially in an election year. I think people could use some good news. People could use a feel good story. I do think that the beauty industry has always been a barometer of what's happening in the world. I really do. I think that we lived in a time and grew up in the beauty industry in a time where stories were important. Now, as we're discussing, not so much because we've gotten so quick and cheap and easy. but. To your point, I think the pendulum always swings, right? It always goes one way to another way. But as we get older and as our generation gets older, I think we purchase differently. I think our needs are different. So I do think there's a need for this maybe little bit of escapism again, rather than, oh, I need this. Let's get it. Or let me go into Amazon and order that. I'm out of that. It's like beauty doesn't have to just be replenishment. Beauty can also be that wonderful escapism, that sort of back to school mentality. Let's it go shopping. Swept you Let's away. Yeah. Yes. Hell gone. Take me away. You know, that it kind just of- swept you away. Yeah. yeah. So for fall, well, you can see all of my gray. It just comes so quickly after summer. So I'm thinking about going a little darker. You can see I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm more on the weedy side of a strawberry blonde, if you will. So I think my hair color is going to go a little more of a rich apricot deeper. Okay. Not copper, but, you know, I'm not going to go too orange, not going to go too dark, not going to go too violet in the undertone, but I have to be careful. Maybe just yeah. that means a lot more low light just richer maybe more caramel is what i should say yeah we love i'm gonna go darker which means i'm gonna go a little i think i might 
play with some eyes, single shadows this fall. I'm working on my lip lines here. I think I'm going to have a colorful fall is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm trying to wear even color. color. Here, I'll take my glass up. And as you can see, yeah, this is where I'm at. I'm still in summer at the beach. Little bronzer, little blushy, little lippy. That's mm -hmm. it. You know, that's where I'm at today. Maybe I'll go full glam. I don't know. But this is the world I'm living in right now. I got to go pick up my kids later from a tennis match. It's like, this is where I'm at. Yeah. Um, but I think that falls a, a time to experiment, falls a time to have some mm -hmm. fun with beauty. And I'd love our listeners to connect with us on Instagram and tell us what they're looking forward to. Are they investing, you know, this fall in skincare? Are they going to get a new lip just because? Are they going back to wearing eyeshadow again because they haven't in 20 years? This is the fun thing. Some people might call it mindless. Some people might call it escapism. Some people call this a necessity. No matter where mm -hmm. you are in your beauty journey, let the fall season guide you what you want to do and how you want to present yourself. I think that's what's fun about beauty. It's never the same thing. It can and be, it's, And it's so easy. I guess if I were to... Just tell you a story about what I'm going to do for fall. Well, this is going to be my lady season, I think. I think I'm going to have color on my nails okay. all through to January. I might consider actually doing my hair, putting on earrings, and either always having on a lip or an eye. But I think I'm going to try having a little bit of a lady season. I've been running around like a feral bohemian child in the canyons of Southern California all summer. Yeah. I have okay. not put my feet in, closed-toed shoes, barely, and I've been just been wearing sundresses and T-shirts, and you know that's not really very me, so I have been having right. a very lousy pair summer. Undergarment be damned. Like, I've just been doing it, so. Just flying free. The pendulum swinging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. I don't know. I haven't decided. I mm -hmm. Well, I haven't decided how I'm going to present this fall. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's time to go back to some red lip again, you know? I, yeah. I haven't done that in decades and years. And if I do ever pop on a red lip, it would be if I was going out, you know? And I guess I need to maybe do that again. Go out again. Go out again. Go maybe out, you need some date nights. Eight nights. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. Maybe it's time. You know, we just, we get caught up in our world. We get caught up in our lives, you know, of doing what it is you do, whether that's work or work at home, work from home, work with kids, work without them, pet parents. Right. Doesn't matter. Well, As women, we're like, you know, we're busy, right? Everyone's always busy. But I don't think you're ever too busy for yourself, you know, to do at least a little something and feel better about yourself. And your kids are at the age where it's really yeah. nice for them to see mom and dad going on dates. Yeah, that's true. They enjoy that. As long your as your husband's going to be like, as long as we bring some food back for them, they're good. Yeah. That, yeah. You know? yeah. Raz is going to be like, where are you know? going? Can you bring some back? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. that's a bad influence. Bad, <laughs> bad influence. Yeah. Well, well I'm going to be on like, dates. We'll be in D.C. tomorrow. We have to go to D.C., the family. So I, if I get any time, maybe I'll check out some some beauty places in D.C. Um, Perfect. And see what the vibe is happening there. You know, that's something that used to be really important. And it's probably another episode. But beauty for different zip codes, different areas. Oh, yeah. Right? That was such a big thing. Like East Coast makeup, Midwest makeup, South. Like, you know, we were so into that and it'll just be interesting to see, you know, maybe interesting to see. Around. Yeah. I'm heading into Beverly Hills a little later this week. So I will take a tour through the beauty in Beverly Hills, which is always a whole different. I mean, Beverly Hills is its own strange bubble. I lived there in this little magical garden apartment right off of Wilshire and Crescent. So I was like, walk to Rodeo. My pharmacy was in the heart of Beverly Hills. And every time I'd walk there, I was like, this really is Oz. It is the oh, most yeah. magnificent, but it is the weirdest place you've ever been. And it's tiny. Oh, yeah. Everyone oh, it's tiny. knows everyone. It's yep. tiny. 
So it does feel very safe for those reasons, but yeah. Yeah. What a weird place. (laughs) I remember one time speaking of weird, I was out there doing a meeting and I would always stay at the peninsula in Beverly Hills. And I remember I do all my meetings there and all my training and education. And I remember, you know, and then you just down the road was, you know, Saks and Neiman's and Barney's and like every all the usual suspects, right? All of our accounts were down there. And I remember walking out one morning, the peninsula, and I remember walking out and saying, the doorman said, oh, you know, can we can we give you a lift somewhere? They have a house car, you know, whatever. back in my glamour days. And I said, no, I think I'm just going to walk. I have a meeting at Barney's. I'm just going to walk down to Barney's. And they looked and were like, you're going to what? And I remember this was in the 90s. And I remember walking, you know, down. Nobody street. walks in L.A. And no one walks. And I must have been honked at. I think they thought. I was working the streets and here I am walking. Well, you know, the you know, bar at the peninsula, that's where the well, ladies hang out. You know, and yeah. here I am walking to my meeting and yeah, people are I know. like driving by and like honking. And, and I'm thinking I, to myself, why is everybody honking at me? What am I doing? And that was the first time I really like walked in LA. And I think it was the last time I did that because I definitely. Didn't yeah, feel. it's not like New York or good San idea. Francisco. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, you yeah, know, I was just like, we just walked, walked everywhere. I know. Growing up in LA, nobody walks in LA. You get in your car and you drive for a few blocks. I walk because I'm yeah. a lunatic. But yeah, yeah. so strange. So strange. Oh, the listeners, tell us where you guys are. Tell us what you want to see. We're turning the cameras on for you. It's going to be mayhem for a little while. So just get used to it. Just get up. used to this. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're going to be doing our makeup. I mean, a little earlier, I was, you know, pull out some of your color, pull out your cream shadows, show us what you like. You never know what we're going to be up to while we're here. Oh, yeah. Um, let me see what's in my desk. Hang on. Oh, you know what? I'm loving this hmm. from NYX, you know? Oh, oh, the duck. Is it duck plump? I, I just, she's got a great sense of humor. I have to, and I yeah, love that's really humor funny. Duck plum. Yeah, but if I want my luxury and I want to be serious, you know, I break out my French brand. But every so often I'll buy something, not just because I love the color or the packaging, but sometimes the humor. The humor just gets me. I love it. This is duck plump. So, <laughs> but I, I do I, love that. I bought this because I was like, oh, is it going to give me like Lisa Rinna lips? And I'm like, oh, I'll take that because, you know, who doesn't want that, right? So, but look, I saw Lisa the other day running around. I have to tell you, look at that. I mean, good. we're not getting into We're not doing it's that today. Me. We're not doing that today. All right, next okay. episode, because I have three things that I found that I can okay, fill in. Okay, we're not doing that today. Home. Today is not the day. This is our welcome back positivity. Okay. Bye. We're not doing that. No, we're not. We're not. Okay. We're not. We're not tearing ourselves apart. I'm uh, not tearing myself apart. I'm just spackling the facade, baby. Okay, but I'm just. I like this duck plump because it's actually tingly. Maybe I, I should grab gave, some. I think it gave me a little bit of a, a fuller lip. Wait a minute. Back up. You saw Rinna in the wild. I. I gotta yeah. tell you, she's I gotta tell you, lot. I have been a fan. I know she's so polarizing and so controversial, which I love a polarizing, controversial laugh. I've been a fan of hers, oh my God, since Melrose Place. I mean, yeah. I love you so much. Well, you know, it's funny. We know so I many love people. You, we know so many people in common, and we just haven't ever been introduced. And obviously, well, get introduced so we can get her c- to come on. <laughs> We have so many people in common, but of course, I'm obviously not going to say to her on the street, oh, hi, we know these eight people in common. But I will tell you, I love that. She's running around all the time. And I will say every time that I'm ever, because, you know, it's like I'm in front of her or behind her getting a coffee or a tea or this or that. She is always so polite to whomever is helping her. I know. I think and she's that a- I think is goes a very long way, especially in Beverly Hills. She's always polite. Yeah, yeah. No, it's important to me anyway. Let's do it. All right, fun people. Well, to be your dog this has just been a random fun. We had no real topic. We just wanted to say hello, 
This is a freebie episode in the middle of the week. We won't be charging you. Right. This is a freebie. We're going to be posting a new episode with a brand founder, female brand founder, very interesting woman coming up. If you have not watched our interview with Dr. Paracone, you're totally missing out. Oh, and you know, I watched it for the third time doing some sound edits for the audio version of the podcast. And I'm still taking notes. He's coming back in October, everybody. He's a regular with us. I can't and we're wait on YouTube. to have regular. So you can now find us on Spotify, on Apple, on all the podcasts. So you can find us if you want to see our faces again. If this didn't feel like a train wreck to you, come watch us on YouTube. We're there too. So yeah, we're just hanging out. We're talking all things beauty, everything from mature humans Over the age of 40, if you like beauty and you like dishing and you like memories and you like learning new things and you're a little older and you don't know it all, come listen to us. We're (laughs) not. All right. I love you, Susan. I love you, Hill. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, you will. Bye. Bye. Stay glossy. Stay glossy. Yeah, that's right. Stay glossy, you.